now. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. Amen. I want y'all to look at this. Amen. I'm going to start here in verse. <clears throat> the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. Beginning in verse 18. Amen. Everybody there? Amen. 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 The Gospel of Mark chapter 12, beginning in verse 18, he said, Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took her, and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise. And the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do you not therefore err because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead, that they rise. Have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You therefore do greatly error. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the entrance of thy word which giveth life. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. Open up our understanding that we might understand the scriptures and we will give you praise in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We just read to you the Gospel of Mark chapter 12, verse 18 through verse 27. Praise God. <clears throat> now, Jesus makes a statement here. And says that God is not a God of the dead, but the God of the living. Praise God. Now everybody must understand that when you were in sin, you were spiritually dead. You were a stranger from the commonwealth of Israel. Amen. You were outside of the grace of God and you were under condemnation. Hallelujah. So therefore, being in a spiritually dead state, you did not know your creator. You had no relationship with him. You had no fellowship with him. Because you were spiritually dead. And the reason why many are spiritually dead is because of sin. Praise God. Now sin is something many don't want to talk about. But guess what? It's something that must be talked about. It must be dealt with within the lives of humanity. Amen. It's something that you just cannot overlook because we know that God is not overlooking the sins of humanity. This is why he sent his only begotten son that he might pay the penalty of our transgressions when he died on Calvary and shed his blood for that particular reason. Amen. But everybody must understand that God is not the God of the dead. Amen. 
Are you listening to me? He is not the God of the dead. Praise God. And what we're beholding in this end time hour, we see much of the Christian church have descended into a state of spiritual death. Praise God. Somebody said, well, how is that, Pastor Walker? How has the church descended into a state of spiritual death at the one time having the life of God? Praise his holy name. Well, I will tell you briefly how that has happened. Amen. The reason why the church has descended into a state of spiritual death, again, the reason is because of sin. There is sin in the camp. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Just like Joshua had to deal with Achan, who God had revealed that he had took a Babylonian garment and hid it in his tent. Praise God. That sin had to be dealt with. Praise God. Because we have to understand that when we allow sin to come in the camp, hallelujah, what it will do, it will revoke the presence of God. And without the presence of God, the church will be in a spiritually dead state. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. And that is a bad testimony for one to say that I am a believer in Christ Jesus. That is a bad testimony to say I'm in holiness and yet, praise God, that individual is dead. They show no signs of life in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Now everybody must understand this has been the enemy's agenda from the beginning is to annihilate every human being. And when Jesus testified in the gospel of Matthew 16, verse 16 through 18, he said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan has been on an assignment to kill the church. Come on. Oh, yes, sir. You don't believe that? How is it that people can be on Holy Ghost fire one minute and the next minute, praise God, they're just as dead as a doorknob? Come on. Hallelujah. Didn't Jesus say the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy? And look at most people in the church. They just this dry.
are people that have once lived upon the face of the earth, but now they have died and they're now in the grave. People that are dead and buried don't praise God, but even them that have natural life, that have descended into a spiritually dead state, they don't praise God either. God, many of them look as if they've been embalmed with fluid. They can sit and look at you like uh, you stupid or something. God, they don't have no Holy Ghost fire. God, they don't have no joy. Hello? They don't have nothing. God, and you know why they like that? It's because there's some sin in their life that has caused them to become cold. Did not Jesus say in John 16, chapter, chapter 16, verse 13, Amen. 
when something that once had life and then it eventually dies, when you do the autopsy, you see it's because of sin. Amen. These are them we can say they have flatlined. Amen. The word flatline means they die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sin is the cause. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference what the sin is by name. It's sin. Yeah. And this is what the enemy has longed to do. Amen. Is to tempt the church. Because the devil knows that the flesh is always lusting and this is why he will bring temptation up on us that are in the church. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. And when us that are in the New Testament church begin to yield to the flesh to fulfill our lust, you know what's happening? We are allowing the enemy to gain inroads not only into our lives but also into the church in which we are now members of and he is inflicting debt upon the house of God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Somebody said, well, what about when Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail? Praise God. Well, when Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail, it's because Jesus has a people, amen, that are not bowing their knee to Baal, that are not kissing his feet, that are not yielding to the flesh. Come on. Jesus has a people that are not living in sin. They are overcomers. Come on. They're living in everyday victory. And this is his church. And many people that are in the church will die in their sins because they have went back to the world. And many of them have died while they were out there in that condition. You understand? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How many know that God is not a God of the dead? Amen. No, he's not. Amen. Amen. When Mary went to the tomb, the Bible said there were angels there. And they said to her, Why seek ye the living? Among the dead. He is not here. He's risen. As he said. How many know that God. Is not dead. He's yet alive. And if the same God. Is in your life. Should not you show signs. Come on. That he lives in you. The apostle Peter said. Come on, somebody. Hey, glory, glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what we see much of, the, much of the time within the houses of prayer is a bunch of lifeless people. Because outside the limit of our sight, outside of these four walls, you would be amazed at what people are doing. Then we wonder why they are lifeless. Amen. And I want you to know that them that are living holy, that's walking in discernment, they can, they can decipher between somebody that's praising God in holiness and somebody that's praising God and yet they live in a hypocritical life. So don't think this because somebody is opening up their mouth and cloaking their head don't mean they got, amen, Holy Ghost fire. Because the Pharisees honored God with their mouths. They honored him with their lips. Amen. They made long prayers to be seen and heard of men. But Jesus said, amen, in their hearts, they were far away from him. So you can discern the ones who really got it and the ones who don't. Because we do have people that seems to have life and you know they know how to mix in, but the ungodly life that is behind that testifies that their praise does it, it does not have life because they don't have real joy. Come on. You understand? Their heart 
God is far from him. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says over in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, listen to what the apostle said over here. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 5 beginning at verse 14. Now listen to what the scripture brings out and I want to ask I want you to I want to say this why would the apostle Paul have to say this to them that were in the church of Ephesus because something tragic had happened hello Amen. before I read verse 14 verse 11 says and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them why would he have to write that to the saints in Ephesus? Because many of them were caught up in this. So God had to speak a word to the apostle, amen, to pull his people out of their unrighteousness. Amen. Watch this. Then he says, for it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things are reproved, are made manifest by the light, for whosoever does it make manifest his light. Then he said, wherefore he said, oh, wait, Thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that? Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what sin will do. It won't put you to sleep. Delilah put Samson to sleep. Sin will rock about, baby, and put you to sleep. Come on. And when that happens, the devil can cause you to lose your anointing. Come on, somebody. Hello. 
Much of the Christian church is in a spiritually dead state. That's why many don't want to pray anymore. The moment they hit their knees, they pass out. The moment they sit on the pew, they pass out. So therefore we know they have no altar in their home. There's no prayer going on in the home. There's no prayer going on in this house, which the Bible says is the temple Praise God. I 
How is it that the Pharisees uh, could worship God uh, and yet uh, they rejected the Messiah, uh, the one whom God sent uh, to be the Savior of the world? Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you're seeing in this in town among many within the house of prayer are a people that has flatlined. And when you do the autopsy, it's sin. Mm -hmm. That's why they're cold. Amen. Is, that, is that what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24? Let's read it. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 24. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what he said here. Now, now he's diagnosing the, he's diagnosing the church. Amen. Amen. Many can go to the hospital and get a diagnosis from the doctor and they believe the report. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God can give you a diagnosis. And God doesn't misdiagnose anything. When he diagnoses a thing, it's spot on. It's 100. Amen. It's a true report. And he says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12, listen to what he said. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Are you listening? See, this is the problem right here. It's sin in people's hearts. And I don't care what the sin is. I don't care how small it is. The small foxes still destroy the mind. Don't you overlook them small foxes. Come on. That's why they 
they keep eating the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They don't think that they're going to die. Some think that they're young and they're just going to continue to live. And yet the Bible not only shows that you're not to boast yourself for tomorrow. Even in everyday life we see even our young people are losing their lives in droves. And you got to understand that if you don't repent and find salvation in Christ Jesus, you're going to lose everything you have. And that's your soul. He said, because the love of many shall wax cold. He said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. Look at when, look at when it's look at look at when it's time to praise God. They won't even praise God. Amen. They barely open their mouth. They just sit and look. Hmm? Amen. Barely move. Mm -hmm. They think they need to see somebody else before they get to doing it. Amen. How many know salvation is an individual affair? My salvation ain't got nothing to do with yours. I got my own anointing to get your own. Come on. I got salvation, you get your own. Praise God. And some people like to sit back and wait for other people to do this or somebody else to cut a step, praise God, you know, and then that makes them happy for them. To, no, 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 you got it all wrong. Because God is talking to you, the individual. Praise God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Many's love has waxed cold. They have no prayer life. They don't praise God. Hallelujah. And when we're talking about praising God, we ain't talking about only when you come into the house of prayer. Amen. Amen. Because praising God is a lifestyle. Amen. It's something that we do. Amen. When you've been born again, God puts a praise in your belly. Amen. The songwriter said, I got a praise on the inside and I can't keep it to myself. Say, man, see, the Holy Ghost will always stir you to praise God. He'll stir you to praise God. And guess what? I gotta get it out. We're not supposed to do things that we got this attitude that we don't want to do. 
and dragging their blanket like, like pig pig. Like Linus, rather, praise God. Hallelujah. You understand? Amen. But look at the other things they're doing. They excited. They happy. Can you understand? Yeah. But when it comes to the things of God, oh, it's time to go on the street and witness. It's time, amen, to go talk to some souls. Oh, here come the size. It's time for Bible study in the home. Amen. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Huh? And see, don't get excited about Bible study because, uh, oh, you the one teaching it. Because see, in the home, the husband is the head. He's the teacher. He's the teacher of the scriptures in the home. Now, there ain't no husband. Mama got to do it. Mama got to do it. Are you listening to me? When that husband is in the home, he's the teacher. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. You understand? Amen. Because God has order. He's a God of order. Let everything be done decently and in order. Praise God. And how many know prayer is always in order when it's done right? Praising God is always in order when it's done right. The study of scripture is always in order. Come on somebody. Praise God. David said in Psalm 66, he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You know why many can't make a joyful noise unto the Lord? You want to know why? Because they never Spend time in prayer. And while they're in prayer, they never worship. See, Psalm 1611 says, it says, in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And when people don't spend time in prayer and in worshiping God, you can never get in his presence. And the Bible says in his presence, there's fullness of joy. Then when we come out, we can make a joyful noise. Come on, somebody. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Then he said, make his praise glorious. Amen. See, I don't think we think about this. When Jesus returns, the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5, 26 and 27, he's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a glorious church. And a glorious church is always making his praise glorious. Come on. Are you listening to me? You ain't, you ain't giving God the crumbs. Come on. You ain't giving him crumbs, and yet you want his best. Come on, God always going to give his best. But if God going to give you his best, you better give him your best. Because God can look at you sometimes and say, that ain't your best. You can do better than that. You can clap better than that. You can dance better than that. You can shout better. And sometimes the way we praise God, that is not your whole heart in that time. You giving him the crumbs. You giving him what you want to give him based upon how you feel. Come on, somebody. We ain't praising him like David did. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. It's crazy it shall continually be in my mouth. I'm reminded of the Psalms where David also said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. See, when you're not giving him your best, you're not giving him all. You're not loving him with all your heart, soul, and mind. The 
Don't you know that when you really love someone, you give them your all. You give them everything. You leave it all on the table. Come on, somebody. You don't leave no stones unturned. Are you listening to me? Praise God. See, he that is forgiven much, love it much. And God has forgiven us for a lot of stuff that we should have died and went to hell for. But the mercy of God stepped in.
understanding. Because the scriptures say if they that wander out of the way of understanding, they're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. And that is not a church Jesus is coming back for. He come back for a glorious church. A church that don't have no sin. So if you abide in him, you sin not. The enemy, whether it's Satan, the devil, or your own flesh, is always going to attack you to try to pull you out of Christ. Yes. From abiding in Christ. So you can go back to sin. Yes. And the devil knows if he can kill you while you're out there in sin, your soul will be lost. Amen. Even after one time having the Holy Ghost. Because remember, he's coming back to a church without spot, without wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and that without blemish. We have to abide in Christ. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. When you abide in Christ, you're going to praise Him with your whole heart. Amen. Every single day. And watch this. You're going you're gonna to praise Him with your whole heart, right? Amen. And it's impossible to praise God with your whole heart when you don't take heed according to this word. You ain't praising God if you're not obeying this word. Don't think you can just put your hands together and shout and do all of those things. Let me tell you something. David did all of those things. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. David played instruments of music. The anointing was on him and he cast out devils. David clapped his hands. David, amen, worshipped. When he opened up his mouth, he lifted up his, his hands, amen, toward the heavens. But the scripture also says in Psalm 119, how David
James chapter 2. Show me your faith. By the works. And if there's no evidence of what one says they believe, that's according to scripture, they just lied. And what they say they believe and all this stuff is not true. They don't believe it. They are liars. And they are freezing cold. Freezer burn cold. In their heart. You understand? Amen. I'm trying to help y'all. Huh? How you gonna make heaven? The church was born in Holy Ghost fire. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. And I heard a sound from heaven as a rushing of a mighty wind. And it filled the house. What filled the house? This sound filled the house where they were sitting. And tons of fire set up on each and every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave up. The church was born right there. Amen. It was born in Holy Ghost fire. Huh? What birthed the church? Prayer. That's what it was in that upper room. It was up there praying and fasting. And one scripture also brings out that when it was in that upper room, they was also praising God in the temple. Until the day of Pentecost had fully come. And the Holy Ghost came, the church was born. And that's how the church is supposed to be that. They had love one for another. That's why I said they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They also continued in fellowship. See, it takes the love of God to do that. And when people don't, when people have grown cold in their love, they don't fellowship. They ain't trying to fellowship. They ain't trying to get with you. They ain't trying to do anything. They think just texting is enough. They think just seeing each other during the week is enough. It's not. Amen. You got sinners to see each other every day. Right. You got clubs open every day. Yeah. Come on, you got strip clubs open in every day. Those same yeah. people see each other almost every day in the strip club. Come on. Y'all yeah. don't talk to me. Look at the church. You're so cold. You get so tired. And, uh, yeah, I saw it. You cold. That's not how the saints was in the scripture. Come on. You got these medical marijuana joints popping up everywhere. Green light dispensary from the earth. They got some new one on prospect. Starts with a T. I can't even pronounce all these medical men popping up everywhere. And here we got the church cold as ice. Then we wonder why the Christian church is not being what it's supposed to be, the salt of the earth. Amen. We're supposed to be influencing them that are in the earth realm. We're supposed to Operate in Holy Ghost power Amen. among them that are in the earth realm. Exemplifying the kingdom of God and the name of the Lord Jesus. And we can't even do it because we can't even love one another. Amen. How can one possess the Holy Ghost and you can't even love one another? Can't get along with each other. That's how it is throughout Christendom. And, all, and a lot of folks, all they want to do is just jabber in tongues. When they get through jabbering tongues, they can't stand folks. Which means you don't have anything. You can come back to the altar. So you can get it for real. Because when you get it, you ain't going to just speak in tongues. You're not going to just have power, but you're going to have some love. And you'll be able to love one another as Christ loved us. And if you have not got there, it's because you probably are not saved. Because it don't take a hundred messages to get you there. In the scriptures, it only took a one. Praise God. Are you listening? When they heard the word, the Holy Ghost directed them right to that word, that truth that was spoken out of the mouth of the apostle. And they began to do what thus saith the Lord. Jesus said, if you abide in my love, as I abide in my Father's love. We do that when we do keep his commandments. Amen. So y'all want to talk to me. Amen. See, another, 